Today's lesson is all about objects that move in circles, and we are going to be covering specification points. This is for the home A level of 103 and 104. If you're doing IAL, it's 87 and 88, and those are to express angular displacement in radians and degrees and convert between the two. And 104, understand what is meant by angular velocity and use the equations with angular velocity in them. Okay, so let's start by talking about angular displacement. If we look at a typical circle, as is shown in the picture, we know that to complete one circle, we have to turn 360 degrees. And we also know that the circumference of the circle can be calculated by 2 pi r. So what this means in terms of radians is what if we divide this by r, and so we say, okay, if we measure the circumference in r-sized values and divide by r, we're going to end up with two pi r's around that circle. So one radian is given as the angle that is moved when the circumference that you move is equal to the radius of the circle. So s, that is the circumference, is equal to r. That means that there are two pi radians in a complete circle. And so to move through an angular displacement of one radian, you have to move to a distance equal to the radius around the circle. Now, angular displacement is used for objects that move in circles, or you may have encountered this before in waves, because linear displacement in this context is slightly different. Um, obviously, if you start up here, let's say at the zero degrees, and you travel around the circle, getting back to the same place, your linear displacement will be zero, which is not very helpful if we want to look at the mechanics of the objects that move in a circle. So instead we use the angular displacement. What angle did you move through? If you want to calculate the angle that you moved in radians, then our angle in theta is going to be s, which is the displacement around the circle, the circumference that you have traveled over the radius of the circle. Normally, when we use radians, we don't bother to actually give numbers. Um, we just give answers in multiples of pi. And if you want to convert between the two, then from degrees to radians, it is 2 pi divided by 360. And from radians to degrees, it is 360 over 2 pi. So you're basically saying that 360 degrees is equal to 2 pi. So if you divide by these numbers, it will give you the equivalent. Okay, so let's think about angular velocity then. It is almost exactly the same as linear velocity in that it is displacement over time, just the way linear velocity is. But in this case, because we are not looking at linear displacement, we're looking at angular displacement, we're going to go for the angle that you travel through over time. So when an object moves around in a circle, as we've said, it eventually comes back to where it started. In doing this, it will have moved an angular displacement of one full circle, 360 degrees, or, as we like to do now, two pi radians. So when we're going to think about the angular displacement for one full circle, we know that it has traveled two pi radians. Something that again might be familiar to you from your study of of waves before is the period. And we use the period here for circles as well as for waves, so the period is the time taken to do a complete wave or a complete circle. Once we have this, then we can start thinking about our angular velocity, because now we have the angular displacement in one full circle, two pi radians. And we have the time it took to cover that angular displacement, which means we can calculate the angular velocity. And our angular velocity is given the symbol omega. And that is the angular displacement, which is 2 pi over the time it took to the, do that capital T. We also should know from our studies that the period is equal to 1 over the frequency which means that we can rewrite this equation here and substitute 1 over f for t, giving us omega is equal to 2 pi f. So we have two versions of our 
angular velocity equation, depending on whether you're given the time it took to do a full circle, or whether you're given the frequency. Let's consider for a moment linear velocity, because it is important, because although we use angular velocity a lot with circular motion, we do have to consider how fast the object is actually moving. So if we have two objects and they're circling the same central point here, and one of them is on the inner circle and one of them is on the outer circle, and they start at A and they finish at B. Although they've both covered the same angular distance, and that's a quarter of a circle, so that would be 2 pi divided by 4, which would obviously be pi over 2. That's the angular distance that they've covered, or their angular displacement. You can see very clearly from the diagram that actually the object on the outside here has covered a much greater this distance than the object on the inside. For the outer object to keep up with the inner one, so if they were going to, to complete this pi over 2 radians in the same time, it's clear that the object on the outside has to be moving faster than the object on the inside. Now we know that velocity is displacement over time. And in this case, our displacement is going to be the circumference of the circle, or in this case, quarter of the circumference of the circle. But if we consider the full circle, because the same rule would apply to the full circle, we know that the displacement would be 2 pi r if the object on the outside and the object on the inside did a full circle, and that would be divided by the time period. So that means that our linear velocity is 2 pi r over t. But let's look at this equation for a moment and say, well, we know 2 pi over t. We know what that is. That's our angular velocity, which means that our linear velocity then is angular velocity times the radius of the circle. Let's have a summary of what we know so far. We know that the angle turned in radians is the displacement around a circle, that is, the part of the circumference of the circle, over r. We also know that the angular velocity is the entire circumference of a circle that we cover in terms of the angles, divided by the time it took to do that. And we know that that's equal to 2 pi f because t is equal to 1 over f. We can substitute straight in. There's our first lot. Now, if we look at v, the linear velocity, v is equal to 2 pi r over t, the total circumference covered over the time taken. We know that 2 pi over t is omega, so v is equal to r omega. What you find with circular motion is that there are a lot of versions of the same equation, and so you have to be able to pick, depending on what you're given in the question, you have to be able to choose your version so that you know and can do all kinds of different questions. And to that end, we're going to try some questions, and I will show you how it is that you need to work your way through them. Question 1. Turntable on a record player rotates at 45 revolutions per minute. Calculate its angular velocity, so we want omega in reds per second, and the linear velocity, right? Linear velocity, we want v at a point 14 centimeters from the center, and that's r. Okay, so let's start this off. Part a, we want its angular velocity. We know it does 45 revolutions every minute, and we know each revolution is 2 pi. So that means it's 45 times 2 pi, and it's going to do that in one minute, but of course we want it in rads per second. Second is the standard unit anyway, so we're going to divide that by 60, and that gives us 4.71 rads per second. This happens a lot in, they'll give, in that they'll give you different units and you need to sort of interpret those. You need to think your way through them. What about part B? We know that B is equal to R omega. R we know is 14 centimeters, but again, that is not a standard SI unit, so we need to change that into meters. Making V equal to 0 0.14 times 4.71, which we calculated above, 
0.66 meters per second. Fairly straightforward starting question for us. Just an object lesson in thinking through what revolutions per minute is and in watching the units. Number two, the spin dryer whirls close at an angular velocity of 85 rads per second. The drum has a radius of 0.2 meters. Calculate the linear velocity of the clothes. Again, pretty straightforward. We know that linear velocity from our equation set is r omega, which means no problem with the units here, 0 0.2 times 85, giving us a value of 17 meters per second. Question number three. I'm going to get a little bit more complicated here. A stirrer in a food mixer rotates so the end of it is moving around once in 0 0.07 seconds. If it does one complete revolution in that time, that makes that our time period. If the length of the stirrer arm is 9 centimeters, again that's our radius and we need to think how to convert that to meters. Calculate A, the linear velocity at the end of the arm. Okay, so we know that velocity is displacement over time. And in this case, our displacement is going to be 2 pi r, which is the circumference of the circle, divided by the time period, which is going to be 2 pi times 0 0.09, converting that unit, over 0 0.07, giving us an answer of 8.08 .08 meters per second. Part B, the linear velocity halfway along the arm. There's a couple of ways you can do this. I'm going to do it the long version, just so that you can see that. But logic should dictate to you that if the radius is going to be halved, then the entire answer should be halved. So we're expecting to get 4.04 as an answer here. Let's see if we do. So if we do the same thing, V is displacement over time, which is 2 pi r over t, which is 4.04. If you put in r as being 0 0.05 instead of 0 0.09. Right, what about part C? The angular velocity of the arm. We have a couple of ways we can go about this. The classic way would be omega is equal to 2 pi over t, which means it's 2 pi divided by 0 0.07, which will give us 89.76 rads per second. Option two is to use our v is equal to r omega equation, because we already have v, and we're going back to the original v here of 8.08, .08, and then rearrange that for omega, which gives us omega is equal to v over r, which is 4.04 .04 over 0 0.045, so you choose your radius to match the velocity, or 8.08 .08 over 0 0.09, both of which will give you 89.77 rads per second, which is obviously the same, with a little bit of rounding considered. Part D, the revolutions per second. Revolutions per second is basically telling us how many circles we complete in one second. So we're after the frequency number of circles per second and that's equal to 1 over the time period which of course is 1 over 0 0.07 which gives us 14.3 hertz or you can just give it as per second or you can give it as revolutions per second number four and the final question a helicopter's rotor blades rotate so that the speed of the tip is roughly the same for all helicopters Calculate this speed for the Westland Lynx if the rotor blades are that long, so there's our R, and they rotate with a frequency of 4.974 hertz. Okay, we want the speed. So we're after V. We know that V is equal to R omega, but we don't know what omega is yet, although we have R. We know that 
omega is equal to 2 pi f. That was one of our equations. We could do a double equation and say f is equal to 1 over t and find t. And then omega is equal to 2 pi over t. But we're expecting to be able to shortcut at this point. That gives us 2 pi times 4.974, which is 31.25 rads per second. Right, now we put that into our equation with 6.4 meters. Giving us 200 meters per second. This is very much an introduction to circular motion. These are the quantities you need to be able to understand, you need to be able to calculate with. Looking back at our specification points, 103, be able to express angular displacement in radians and degrees. I think we've done that and convert between the two. I've given you the conversion factors for those. Understand what is meant by angular velocity, the angular displacement over time, and use the equations with angular velocity in them. We have used those. We are going to be using these equations, and obviously we know that velocity leads to acceleration, which leads to resultant force. And in the same way, the angular velocity here is going to lead to angular acceleration and to circular or centripetal force. So the next video will deal with how we connect all of this together. Make sure you like and subscribe. Have a lovely day.